Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. And now let's start with the first story. It's called Ask for it. I was working as a night auditor at the top hotel in a medium sized city in the Midwest. For those who don't know, in many hotels, night auditors manage the front desk overnight and handle some light bookkeeping or accounting work. Our policy was that if a guest went over the authorized amount on their credit card, we'd send a copy of their folio, basically a receipt of their charges so far, to their room, which our overnight security staff would slide under their door. One night, a guest from a big coastal city was staying with us for business and had gone over his authorized amount. So, following policy, the folio was sent to his room. Around 4.30 in the morning, I got a very angry call from him, asking why the folio was sent. I explained the policy, but he was still upset and, in frustration, demanded I authorize his credit card for $175,000. I responded, yes sir, no problem sir. The unused portion would be refunded to his credit card within 7 to 10 business days. This meant he had almost $200,000 held on his card for nearly two weeks. When I came in the next night, my supervisor was waiting and asked why I'd authorized that amount, because he asked for it. The next story is called Fix It Myself. I was working as a technician for an internet provider, mainly handling residential buildings. My job was straightforward. Go to the basement, find the distribution box, patch the cable to the correct endpoint for the requested flat, then go to the flat and set up the outlet if needed. I'd verify the signal, connect the modem, make sure everything was working and let the happy customer know the internet was ready. One day I had a customer who was a really know-it-all. Right from the start it was a challenge. I called to ask him to let me into the building and he insisted he knew exactly where our distribution box was only to lead me straight to the electricity provider's box. Then he was absolutely certain his flat number was XX, even though my paperwork clearly showed YY, and indeed it turned out to be YY. Eventually we got up to his flat. At this point I needed to check the signal to ensure everything was good to go, but he started rushing me, saying, come on, hurry up, I need my connection, I have important work to do. I explained I needed to test the signal first. This is when he gave me the perfect setup for some harmless compliance. He insisted, you don't need to test it, just connect the cable and go. I'll finish it myself if there's anything else. I gave him a fair warning, saying the test would only take a few minutes, but if it didn't work, I wouldn't be able to come back for a couple of days. He was adamant, so I said, all right, if that's what you want, as it turned out, the cable was live, but the signal was from the local TV antenna, not our internet line. This mix-up wasn't uncommon in older buildings, with we use firing and patches going to the wrong line. I can only imagine what he tried before he finally called our call center to schedule a follow-up visit. When I returned three days later, I was greeted by his kind wife, who even made me tea and thanked me for fixing the problem. The last story is called Parking Spots. I work at a niche retail store in the heart of town. Our customers are dedicated, often traveling from far away just to visit us. So having an accessible parking lot is essential for our business. Unfortunately, our next door neighbors, a family run landscaping and garden supply store, have caused parking issues for years. The tension between my boss and the landscaping store owner goes back over a decade, all over something small. At one point, the landscaper complained about a tree on our side of the lot, saying it was unsightly for their customers. It's one of those minor neighborly issues that somehow grew over time. Things escalated after local businesses started bouncing back and our parking lot began overflowing again, mostly with the landscaping store's customers. 
Our two lots are connected, but ours is about twice the size of theirs. The landscaper had decided to reserve nearly all his spots for his vans, though they were rarely even there during business hours. As a result, his customers just parked in our lot, leaving us short on spaces for our own customers. Trying to be reasonable, my boss approached the landscaper with a suggestion. Maybe they could adjust their parking setup a bit, and our lot would be open to their vans if their spaces ever filled up. But the landscaper shut him down immediately, insisting it was absolutely crucial to reserve all the spaces for his fans, despite them rarely being there during the day. The conversation turned heated, ending with my boss threatening to put up a fence between the lots, while the landscaper practically dared him to do it, knowing how expensive that would be. Neither of them spoke to each other for two years after that. Fast forward to recently, and we got a great opportunity. A parking management company approached us with a proposal to install automated license plate cameras to enforce parking. They'd give cars a generous 3 hour free window, but after that vehicles would be fined if they hadn't paid. The setup would be free, and we'd get most of the revenue from the paid parking and any fines issued. It was perfect, since we were losing spaces to people just passing through and it wouldn't affect the nearby stores much. Plus, if anyone had a good reason to park for longer, we could extend their time as needed. However, for the cameras to work, they'd need to cover both our entrance and the landscapers. Being considerate, my boss had the parking company rep reach out to the landscaper to explain the proposal and its benefits. But staying true to form, the landscaper wouldn't even let the rep finish before kicking him out making it clear that under no circumstances would his lot become a paid parking zone. Instead of spending a fortune on a fence, my boss had another idea. Rocks. A construction buddy had a stash of large leftover rocks and offered to place them for a great price. The parking company even agreed to front the cost to be repaid through future parking revenue. So on Monday mornings before opening, one of the buddy's employees a big guy with arms like tree trunks arrived with a truck and crane to place the rocks. They were neatly spaced, allowing pedestrians to pass with carts but fully blocking vehicles. The landscaper came out, yelling and trying to stop the worker, but the worker just calmly told him to step back for safety. The landscaper backed down in frustration. The rocks weren't just a physical barrier. They quickly became a mental obstacle for the landscaper's employees. They'd drive into our lot out of habit, only to realize they couldn't pass through anymore. We watched on our new cameras, trying not to laugh as their vans awkwardly backed up, having to go all the way around to their own entrance. At one point, one of the vans even clipped a rock trying to squeeze through. The next day, the parking company arrived to install the cameras and set up the signage which took a few hours. Meanwhile, the landscaper's family prowled around our lot, snapping photos and videos, as if hoping to catch a violation. But the parking company was very professional, following all guidelines to the letter, so there was nothing for them to report. My boss, meanwhile, was positively glowing as he helped direct the installation. We noticed the landscaper's family had started parking their personal cars in our lot, probably to mess with us. One day, my coworker saw a family member run out of their store to their car. We thought it was odd, but didn't think much of it. Until the following week, when the landscaper's son came into our store, looking embarrassed. Apparently, he'd accidentally stayed past the 3 hour limit and received a $150 fine. He practically begged us to rave it, saying it was just an honest mistake. My boss politely replied, Oh, I'd love to help. But it's out of our hands now. The parking company handles all the fines. The look on his face was priceless. Shoulders slumped, he headed back to their store. Since then, our lot has been blissfully clear. And our customers have had no trouble finding spaces. Meanwhile, the landscapers have had to maneuver their vans into a much smaller area, still trying to act unbothered. And my boss has been smiling a lot more these days. Sometimes the best approach is to just letting people get exactly what they asked for. 
Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. Also, if you want to support me further, check out the channel membership or Patreon. And now, I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.